We'll start this countertop exercise with example 6. The dimensions for the larger rectangle are 160 inches long and 96 inches tall. So I'll start this drawing by drawing that large outside rectangle. This time I'll choose the rectangle icon from the Park Industries toolbar. And when it asks to specify the first corner, I'll enter once for X0 and then again for Y0. The second corner was 160 in the X and 96 in the Y. The next rectangle we're going to draw doesn't start at 0, 0, but it's 48 inches long and it's 25 and a half inches tall. So when we're asked to specify the first point of our next rectangle, we'll click on the screen to select that approximate point. And like before, once we select the first point, it asks for the second. Note the values in the X and Y. These are the coordinates of the first point that we selected by clicking on it. We'll add the X and Y values of our rectangle to the first point that we selected. Pressing the right arrow key on your keyboard will set the cursor. Then press plus 48 and enter, and we'll use the same format for the Y. Press the right arrow key, then plus 25.5 and enter for the height. It is shown in our drawing that the next rectangle starts at the bottom right end of the rectangle that we just drew. And we see that its X value is 25.5 and its Y value is 60. So when asked to specify first point, we'll use a snap. We'll snap to the end of by selecting the end of snap or pressing F6. And then we'll follow the prompt by selecting the lower left end of the rectangle. We'll want to add 25 and a half to the X and 60 to the Y. So press right arrow key plus 25.5 and enter and then right arrow key plus 60 and enter to complete the second corner. Here's the approximate location of the third rectangle and its size is 24 by 24. So we'll click to choose the first corner and then for the second corner we can right arrow key plus 24 and enter, right arrow key plus 24 and enter and finish to complete the rectangle command. Next we can apply the chamfers as shown. The island needs 3x3 three three chamfers on all four corners and the countertops have a 2 inch by 3 inch chamfer. These values are the distance from the corner back to make the chamfer. We can choose chamfer from the edit tab and then we'll set or verify the three things. First distance, second distance, and pick two elements. The values that we set in first and second distance will be used when we apply the chamfer to the two existing lines. So I'm going to type out 2 inches in the first distance and 3 inches in the second distance. We'll verify that pick two elements is selected before we click OK. As we follow the prompts, the first line that we select will use the value that we set in first distance, which was 2. The second line uses the second distance, which we set as 3. We'll need to open chamfer again so we can change the distance values. So complete chamfer 
with a finish. The chamfers on the island are three by three and they need to be placed on all four corners. So we can set the first distance and the second distance to three. And then we'll select all under corners before we say OK. Notice that our prompt is different. It says to select. So we'll select the island to be chamfered and then as always finish when we're done selecting. And then finish again to complete the chamfer command. With example 6 completed we'll move on to 7. In this example we'll learn how to rotate. We'll start by rotating all three geometries a half revolution or 180 degrees. The rotate icon is found under the edit tab. Choose rotate and follow the prompts on the command line. Select all three geometries and then follow through with the finish. And the prompt changes to select a base point. The base point in a rotation command is the point of rotation or point of pivot. I'm going to click in the middle of my large rectangle to be the point of pivot or center of rotation. The rotation angle is 180 degrees, which I'll type in and enter below. Then I'll enter one more time to accept the default of one copy. We will also need to rotate the island an additional 45 degrees. So I'll select it, follow through with the finish, and I'll pick in the middle of the island for its base point or point of pivot. The angle is 45. I'll type in an enter and then enter one more time to accept the default of one copy to complete the rotate exercise. The next exercise, number eight, is an example of how to change the chamfers to arcs. We'll start by removing the chamfers. The easiest way to make a square corner out of two existing lines is to use fillet. Choose fillet and then set the radius to zero before clicking OK. As prompted, select the first line, then the second line, then the first line, then the second line, and then finish. Now we can use the ends of the rectangle to become the ends of arcs. And we could get a third point by temporarily offsetting some reference lines using the distances provided. We'll choose Offset, and in the Offset Distance, we'll start with the offset of 5. We'll offset just a singular line or arc, and then Offset as Geometry should remain unchecked. When we click OK, we'll follow the prompts at the bottom of the screen. Select the line to be offset, and then pick the side to offset to. And then we'll have to finish so that we can choose offset again to change the distance. Either pick offset again or pressing the spacebar repeats the last command, which was offset. The next offset distance is two. And with only line and arc checked, We'll click OK, and then we'll select the line by picking on it, and we'll click on the side to offset too. We can use the middle of these lines to become the second point of our arcs. You can type A for arcs, or you can find the arcs icon on the geometry tab. The type of arc that we need to draw is with information for the start, second, and end point. 
so we'll have to choose the flyout menu. And here we find the arc option that utilizes that information. Click on start second and end point and follow the prompts at the bottom of your screen. The start point of the arc will be at the end point of the rectangle. Make sure you use snaps for accuracy. Select end point and then pick on the end of the rectangle when the snap indicator is lit. Now the prompt change to select second point. The second point will be the midpoint of the offset line. So choose midpoint and then select the middle of the offset line. The prompt now reads to select the end point of the arc. So choose the end point snap and then select the end of the rectangle to complete the arc. Note that we're still in the arc command and being prompted for the start point of another arc. So we can go right to and choose end point and then select the end of the rectangle. And then the second point of the arc would be the midpoint of the offset line that we created. And then as prompted, the end point of the arc will be the other end of the rectangle, which we'll snap to as well. And now that we're finished drawing arcs, we'll finish the command. And now we'll clean the drawing up to look like two countertops. We'll start by deleting the offset lines. Choose Delete, and then, as prompted, select the objects to be deleted, and Finish, before saying OK. We can't delete just the end of the rectangle. Doing so selects the whole rectangle, which will be deleted. So I'll choose Undo to get the rectangle back. Since I only want to remove a portion of the rectangle, I will use Trim instead. When we select Trim, we see below to select the cutting geometries. The arcs are the geometries that will divide the rectangles. Select the arcs and finish. When prompted, to pick what we want to trim away, select the ends of the rectangle in between the pre-selected cutting geometry, the arc. And that completes the drawing portion of the countertops. We'll use this drawing in tutorial number three for part placement. You can either save this drawing or choose file and new to review or repeat this exercise as needed. You can also save a drawing or choose Save As to specify a location and a name. First take note to where the Save As location is currently set. And then you can either browse to an existing location or create a new folder to store your drawings. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. When I click on desktop, it shows all the contents in this window. To create a new folder, I'm going to right click in an open area of this window. This brings up a menu where I can choose new. And then I'll find and click on folder which creates a new folder on my desktop. I'll change the default name to Training Drawings by typing it in and then pressing the Enter key. Now I'll choose that folder and open it by double clicking on it. And I can see that my drawing will be saved into the training drawing folder that's on my desktop. 
type in a name for your drawing, and then press Save to save it in your Training Drawings folder. And then you can OK the verification. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.